the end, at least the pursuit of the past, will aid us in understanding whatever is going on with this dude. I found a page that might interest you. Wait, what? Uh oh. No, that's not good. We miss a page. Hmm. <laughs> but. Huh? Elven page. Pa Elven note. That's a bit odd since we were in every location. So how is it possible for us? Elven locations, Act 5. Legacy of the Ancients, Final Veil, Ease the Enigma. Oh. Threshold. Encountered in an early part of the map. Hard to miss. You will need to step back out to hand the page to the storyteller. Oh, that's ridiculous. I can't... Oh, we need to start Act 6 before we can... Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. That was not what I intended. Okay, so... I didn't miss anything. There's one page missing that was not yet available. So apparently in Act 6 in Threshold there is a page and after we get it we need to go immediately out again and give it to the storyteller. Tagona looks at you with an odd expression, part sisterly fondness and part pride. Greetings, Morgrain. Allow me to introduce you to these two travelers seeking your advice. I hope you can spare them a little time. She bows and takes a step back, a mysterious smile on her lips. The dark-haired warrior bows gravely, holding back the heavy maze on his belt. He looks like a common soldier, but his voice rolls with the power of thunder. My respect, Commander. The word of your noble deeds has spread far and wide, lighting a beacon for those who seek wisdom and kindness, even in the darkest times. Please let us partake of your wisdom. The clean-shaven monk whose belt is adorned with numerous scroll cases, politely bows his head. His glance cast at you from under his brows is deep and penetrating. To resolve our disagreement, I ask you to listen to the tale of the test we faced on our way. Will you do us this honor? I am ready to listen to your travelers. The monk clears his throat and begins his tale. The sound of his voice seems to envelop you. I walked through the darkness, not knowing my way. Not seeing anything around me, fear and loneliness filled my heart, but my desire to persevere was stronger, others followed in my footsteps. The ones who had entrusted their hearts and souls to my care, desperate I called out to the gods who were hidden from me by the impenetrable darkness. Upon seeing my stubbornness and hearing my plea, the patrons of mortals appeared and dispelled the fog that clouded my mind. The warrior continues his story as if the events had happened to him, not to another traveller. The gods offered me a choice between two gifts. One gift was the strength to overcome fear, to prevail over any danger that might come out of the darkness, and to protect those who trust in my judgement. The monk takes up the story, echoing the words of the warrior. The gods offered me the choice of two gifts. The second gift was the knowledge to lift the shroud of darkness and ignorance, to foresee any threat and to lead the ones who place their trust in me away from danger before it strikes. After a pause, the monk looks up at you with shining eyes. Which gift should one who wanders in darkness have chosen? I feel like you're keeping something from me. The warrior laughs heartily and sincerely. You are wise, no doubt about it, but please don't evade the question. Which gift should one who wanders in darkness have chosen? Um, attach buff, the heck? Um. No idea. Let's ask... You should have chosen Power Pathfinder. Let's see. Mm, the first the final mythic pass uh -huh. words of power you know what hmm option one option two 
So we can either choose power or knowledge. Both can be used to aid the ones in need, right? Detach buff, detach buff. Astral Diva, Polymorph, Monadic Diva. Current dialogue speaker. You should have chosen wisdom. The travelers exchange glances and then look at you with a smile. And the monk straightens a divine light burns in his eyes, as bright as the sun. No, Mokrain, you should have chosen knowledge, and so did you. A noble maiden dressed in loose robes bows her head in reverence. I am the messenger of Dalendere, the blessed attendant, who brings deliverance and healing to those who suffer on the battlefield. I visit to your court, Herald, the good tidings that await us in the future. We have come to test your heart, your deeds under the auspicious of Iomede have made you the beloved champion of the Upper Plains. The wisdom you express today before the celestial witnesses leaves no doubt that you are committed to the same ideals we, the angels of Dalenderia, are. From this day on, our patroness will spread her wings and bestow her blessings upon you. Triumph rings in Tagona's voice. See, Morgraine, we are all with you. All the Upper Plains believe in you and are willing to lay their blades at your feet. Victory is near. Okay. Commander, the army of the Champions of the Abyss has been routed. The army. Kuram Zodech has fled to the threshold and abandoned his invincible allies. Odan's pale face, normally so calm, now bears an expression of barely contained exultation. This is triumph for all of Golarion. We've made it clear to every plane out there that we can repel an attack by any opponent. As long as our heroes, like our soldiers, are protecting Golarion's borders, I wouldn't recommend showing up here uninvited. We've taught the demons a lesson they won't soon forget. The sacrifices we've made in this war have thus proven effective. Seems like our path is to knock one esteemed abyss dweller after another off their pedestal. pedestals. Who's going to be your next enemy? A Lamashtu herself? The troops are still in the process of tallying up the spoils, and the battlefield looks like a blood-soaked treasure vault. The demons learned that it was too dangerous to mess with those mad Goladians, so they splurged on the best gear. It's all ours now, and we need to decide what to do with it. Are we going to keep these artifacts for ourselves, demonstrate our trophies to all of Avistan, or destroy them in divine purifying flame? Your dream has come true. The greatest general of the Abyss is undone. Odan lowers his head humbly. He was a worthy foe, and I was honored that you entrusted to me the task of defeating him. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't even sure if that was an important part. The army that defeated the demons, you might have noticed, was led by him. Did you find what you were looking for on the front lines? Yes, I have found peace. I spent the night on the battlefield after my battle with the Abyssal Host, and it was my first night in many years that wasn't ridden with nightmares. The flames have let go of my dreams. Odan's face, previously always so focused and tense, now looks surprisingly be peaceful. What are you going to do now? I will go on protecting people, in memory of the fallen and the glory of the living. My service will not end until I draw my last breath. You are a worthy soldier, Odan. Carry on with your service. I've become so thanks to you. Now know that I will always remember the one who believed in me and gave me a chance to atone for the sins of my past. Madame produces an expertly crafted headband and hands it to you respectfully. Let this trophy be an expression of my gratitude. It belonged to one of Kuramzadech's lieutenants and I took it in a fair fight. So, command against the arm to the teeth feet which provides three luck bonus to damage. Hmm? Commander gains a Doom of Demon's feet. Luck bonus to attack. Doom of Demons. Let a clerics commit this. Commander gains a favor of the gods feet, which provides a plus three luck bonus to AC. Favor of the gods. Huh? Arm to the teeth. Okay. Um. Luck bonus to attack. These two are the same. Hmm. Place all the trophies somewhere in plain sight as a symbol of our victory. Let our triumph be known to all. 
I have no doubt that after this show of strength, the demons will be even more afraid of your all-crushing power. Standing solemnly, Odan says in a slightly trembling voice, What I'm about to say may be inappropriate, even unacceptable, for an officer speaking to their superior, but I am proud to serve you. When I was a boy, I imagined myself as a general who would give back to the armies of Mendev their unstoppable might. Then I grew up and left those childish fantasies behind. But then you appeared and... They weren't childhood fantasies anymore. And I was, in, was I even able to participate. Could I dream of anything more? Never. At last, the Crusader army has regained the glory and might unseen since the days of the First Crusade. The trials we have overcome together have made our warriors into ideal soldiers, cogs in the mechanism of war. Good work, Commander. I never thought I'd be interested in a career in the military, but I suppose even I wouldn't mind serving in such an unstoppable and well-arranged army, if I were younger and the pay were higher. But squares his shoulders and salutes you solemnly. Commander, it is an honor for me and for all of your officers to serve in your army. What have we done here? Anemia, nothing more. <laughs> no, I'm blinded by your pride. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Here we go. So apparently we're not there yet, since there wa the guide said that before we would enter Threshold, we would have time to talk to everyone again. So maybe we need to go to Threshold to unlock that situation. And um, we're going to manage Crusader fast for now. Still have a lot of research to do. Wait. Another angel? Delendria, the blessed servant, approves of the Crusader's actions. Her wise angels wait for mortal wizards to summon them with their rituals and spells. Astral Diva. Whoa, who are they? Okay. Interesting. They appear to be quite powerful. Chanting the fault of daybreak. Priests of Serenary immersed in meditation have received a sign from the goddess. The message was mysterious and unclear, but the priests agree on one thing. The time of the faultless daybreak has passed. The advocates of peace among them claim that this is the hour of the triumphant noontide. Yet their belligerent opponents believe in the advent of the sanguineous sundown. Heavy flare? Light shield? Medium armor? Heavy flail? Another light shield? Okay, medium armor. Okay, so we're going for shield. Either triumphant noontide, light shield, fullest daybreak, 405. 40. Ah, whenever the enemy confirms a critical hit against the wielder, every enemy in a 30 foot area must pass it. Ooh, become blinded and suffer damage. What? Oh, that's much better. Light shield, fullest daybreak. Blinding light. Yes, blinding light. Summon the Sanguineous Sundown. Perfect. Skip a day. It's studied. Deliandra. Perfect. Astral Diva is recruited. Enchanting the Face Dealer's Mask. Two visitors have arrived in Dresden. They are requesting permission to conduct rituals of the remains of the Face Dealer's Mask. One of these spellcasters wishes to save the spirit of a fallen madman, while the other seeks to make him experience true torture. Commander needs to decide whom to support. Wait, what? Pristine mind. Attack roll and automatically succeed. Wait, what? Whenever the wearer of this belt makes an attack roll to confirm a critical hit, it automatically succeeds. 
That's ridiculously powerful. It kills an enemy who had full health with a single hit. All enemies become staggered. That's not good. This headband of mental perfection allow where to reroll three. F Ooh, against death effects per day. That's pretty powerful, but I don't want this. So, of course, we're going for cleanse the spirit of Alir Hanan. We're going to get this belt. The humble monk once almost fell victim to the faceless sphinx just as Alir Khan had. Only humility saved him from madness, and the monk has wanted to show mercy to the fallen sage ever since. He meditated over the relic, contacted the face dealer's spirit, and shared his enlightenment. The relic of Alir Khan thus became a testament to the fact that no evil magic lasts forever and every evil can be overcome. Perfect. Great commemoration. There are a lot of warriors who fought the demons and heroically died. The commander's servants will arrange a great com- Ah, we don't need that. Other... Ali of Wallace of Draft, we already have that. Decree, rank up, development, okay, nothing here. What about requisition? Yeah, repeatable, we don't need that. Um, relics. Enchanting Baphomet's fire. And... Oh, enemies again. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Chanting Baphomet's fire. We're going to destroy the enemies. Where are they? Angel's might. Oh, there you are. Oh, that's an easy target. guess that's the most powerful unit in the entire game. Damn, at least for our side. Whoa. I mean, it's just one unit and it's immediately the entire army is level 4. That's a bit ridiculous. Two spellcasters, a druid and a medium, are asking to be allowed access to the relic containing Baphomet's fire. The rituals will empower the relic, but the commander will have to choose who gets the right to approach the dark flame of the Lord of Beasts. Fiery things. Okay, well, um, this shirt makes all the wearer's fire spells deal additional damage. Whenever the wearer of this skill shirt kills an enemy with a fire spell, they get immunity to ability. To okay. In addition, all the wearer's allies deal additional fire damage and successful attacks with weapons for one round. Wait, what? That's ridiculously powerful. These gloves grant their wear the ability to ignite inner fire within themselves. Okay, active abilities I don't like. Whenever the wearer sneak attack, okay, I don't care, the medium. Yes. The wandering medium hurt the spirit of Chaos, the ever burning in Baphomet's fire. 
Tortured by the flame, the priest became disillusioned with his master and yearned for revenge. The medium awakened the burnt priest's voice, and now Chiarius's guile will serve the new owner of the relic. So we have an army down here. With one spot open. And we have the most powerful unit in the game, so... That's pretty obvious what's going to happen. You are going on a journey south. Okay, that's going to take a while. Angelos Maximus. Okay, skip day. Dead Man's Club. Soldiers who lost their comrades along with their will to live have founded the so-called Dead Man's Club. They leave Dresden to die in battle as heroes and deal as much damage to the enemy as they can in the process. Unfortunately, these actions ruin their officers' plans and undermine discipline within the ranks. Ban the club. Crusader morale and courage. All enemy units receive the wounded fee. Wait, what? No. I remove recruited you unlock the ambush ritual. No. Convince the dead men to become undead adventurers. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sixty vampires are recruited. <laughs> but Ember talked with warriors. Removes 5% of recruited units. Crusade morale increased by 50. Holy sh... Of course we're going to ban the club. Life is a precious gift. After talking to the commander, the soldiers realize that their duty is to live and fight in the name of the fallen. The newfound hope the warriors are eager for battle. Okay. Relic enchanting the remnant remains of the core. A colorless one? Perfect. Maximus. Oh, we can upgrade the level. That's good. Mobile hospital. Mm. Close combat. All units in the army have plus one bonus to attack per level of this feat. Yeah, we're going with that. Oh, we can upgrade even more. Defensive training, offensive, spellcraft. Offensive training. Oh, more. Attack formation, charge formation. Cover. Hmm. And charge formation. 